Thermal paste is uh, its one of those finicky subjects for a lot of people and for a number of reasons. We deal with it as tech tubers virtually every time we show the application process. What's the best method for applying? What's the best compound for said application? Did you use too much of the compound, too little? Everyone has an opinion. And even after independent validation and revalidation by members of the tech community, it always seems like someone somewhere else emerges with different results and that just adds to the mass hysteria. So in this video, we're gonna answer a very simple question with perhaps one of the most rudimentary testing techniques we've ever done on the channel. This is Thermal Grizzly's Carbonaut Thermal Pad, infused with carbon tubes designed to transfer heat efficiently and effectively from the heat source to the heat sink. Thermal Grizzly claims mid-range thermal paste performance, so we'll be sure to put that to the test. Now, the company also boasts over the pad's ability to be reused and left in systems for indefinite amounts of time without risk of composition breakdown or expansion, uh, both of which tend to eat into the performance of typical, say, MX4 paste. So it seems promising, but it might be, I don't know, a little too good to be true. So what you're looking at here is the pad. I mean, this is it. Like, it honestly feels like a little microfiber cleaning cloth, although it's probably a bit rougher than that. It's just, it's extremely thin and flexible. In fact, the thinner the better in this case. Roman spoke of a, a bit of it at CES this year and emphasized the company's plan to get this sheet as thin as possible. You can see it's already pretty thin, but it could be thinner and that would be good from a conductivity standpoint. You see on paper, this thing has a conductivity rating of 62.5 watts per meter Kelvin. Obviously the higher that conductivity rating is, it means it can pull more energy from said surface at a given time temperature. That brings this awfully close to something like conductinite, which is Thermal Grizzly's liquid metal solution. It's a great compound if you're into delitting or, you know, optimal performance. It's a bit messy. It's kind of hard to keep up with. You can check out more of that in this video right here. But if you're worried about something that lasts a long time and uh, really can be moved from system to system, it's not dirty at all. It's actually a very clean application process. Then this might be for you. We're going to find out though what exactly makes this special. So at this point you might be thinking, this is the holy grail of thermal solutions. This little flappy thing right here, it's flexible, long lasting, highly conductive, both electrically and thermally. So don't put this over anything electrically conductive. However, back to the thickness of the sheet, while thermal conductivity is extremely high in this market space, carbonate pads are still quite thick by comparison. Consider this, when you apply thermal paste and smush a cooler atop a CPU, that paste is spread extremely thin. There's a lot of tension there. Heat much prefers metal over paste as a medium, meaning a bottleneck in almost any system is in fact the thermal compound, which is why some direct dye solutions exist to eliminate one point of inefficiency between the IHS and the dye. But anyway, real quick, back to the uh, conductivity of this and the thickness. If you have something that's extremely conductive, right, thermally conductive like this, 62.5 is really high, uh, but its thickness is going to counteract that just a bit, we end up with kind of the happy medium. That's what we have here. Now, sure, Roman and his team could have made this thinner. This pad could have been half as thick as it is now. And it's very difficult, you can imagine, to slice something even thinner than this. Uh, so it would perform better, but the pad might not last as long, at which point, why would you use this over something else that you know is tried and true? So that's when they came back to the whole long lasting approach. You want this thing to last a lifetime. Theoretically, this should never break down. I mean, it's carbon, you know, try melting carbon. Let me know how that goes. So yeah, theoretically, you could plop these things into run of the mill systems. Like I would say like school computers, this would be a great application for, and you could let them run in there for decades. You'd never have to worry about replacing them. Whereas in the case of thermal paste like this, as a solution breaks down with time, the interface becomes less efficient and the CPU in question runs hotter. That's why systems tend to run hotter over time. This is usually the first sign that something's going wrong. So carbonate pads are made to be reusable. They're made to last a long time. And that I think is the biggest selling point of this material. In fact, I think I'm gonna start using these from now on because this saves me the time of having to clean up the thermal paste and reapply it. I mean, this can be a very consistent approach, right? So if I wanna test coolers, like if I wanna switch between one and another, there's different ways to apply thermal paste. Maybe I put a little more at one point than another. You don't want those small variations and using something like this would be a lot better because it keeps things rather standardized. So from my perspective, this is a great um, just kind of way to keep things constant, at least when it comes to the thermal interface between the IHS and the cooler. Now that's just my take, but for just in PCs in general, if you're just looking for a solid solution, I think this is gonna be it. Now, that said, we got numbers to talk about and we're gonna see uh, just how well this performs to some stock thermal compound. I'm just calling this stock because it's not 
special by any means. MX4 is decent pace, but it's not going to perform as good as Cryonaut, which will cost obviously a bit more as well. So we're going to see how this fares, see if Thermal Grizzly's claims hold true, that this indeed does perform about as well as your run-of-the-mill thermal compound. Now our test can't possibly speak to the longevity of the pad, though the principles make sense. Uh, we decided in this video to test just the temperature claims made by Thermal Grizzly. Roman claims low to mid-range thermal pace performance, as I just said, when it comes to thermals. So in my eyes, it made sense to compare the pads to stock thermal compounds found underneath box coolers like the AMD Wraith Cooler, the Wraith Spire, even the Wraith Stealth, as well as common solutions like the Arctic MX4 I've been flashing here and there. You'll also find uh, Thermal Grizzly's own Cryonaut solution, which is also right in front of me. And uh, this is more or less a high performing thermal paste and it won't cure with time. That's really the selling point here is it's not gonna get all crusty and whatnot. The composition of it is actually um, highly intriguing. I'd like to know a little more about what they use to prevent it from curing, but maybe that's a trade secret. Now, the software I used to pull these numbers was IDA64 Engineer. Stressed aspects included the CPU, FPU, cache, and memory, which, while external, is still an important and heavily utilized aspect of any modern chip, so that's why I included memory stressing. The CPU used was the Ryzen 5 2600X, which I feel is indicative of a growing number of gamers and streamers on the market. AMD's perspective and performance in the CPU space has been spectacular lately, and it always feels to me like Intel gets all the love when it comes to testing components and cooling solution, so yeah, here's one for AMD. There is, however, just one catch to all of this, and it has to do with the Carbonaut pads. Now, I must confess, I didn't know this going into it. I thought the pad would be a little bigger and we'd have to cut it down to size, but Thermal Grizzly plans to sell different size pads depending on your application. So in this case, I have a 32 by 32 millimeter pad, basically the size of an Intel desktop IHS, something like the 8700K or 6400 if you wanna go back a few generations. The recommended size for Ryzen CPUs though is 38 by 38, which Thermal Grizzly sells as a separate SKU. However, all I had in hand were Intel samples. So uh, yeah, as you can see here, corners of the Ryzen heat spreader aren't being covered. You technically want to cover all of this for optimal performance. So our Carbonaut pad ran at a slight disadvantage. That's just, uh, I just want you to keep that in mind. Like it's it's not performing as good as it could. Maybe a one or two degree delta is what you're going to see on screen. Uh, but still, I think you'll be impressed by this. So our Ryzen 5 2600X was overclocked across all six cores to four gigahertz with a 100 millivolt offset from stock. The BIOS fan curve was set to max RPM to eliminate potential compensation when temps reach certain levels. This way, all scenarios experience the same level essentially of cooling throughout the burn-ins. So despite our setback regarding IHS coverage with pad solution, we actually ended up with nearly identical peak core temperatures in the case of the pad and Arctic MX4 thermal paste, 88 degrees Celsius versus 87. This could be chalked up to you know application variation or even slight differences at the diode level, which measures temperatures directly in the die. It's the method we were using in IDA64. I double and triple checked MX4 coverage when removing the cooler between runs, by the way, to make sure there was nothing inherently wrong with the way I was applying thermal paste. There's always somebody complaining about the application. I just do one long line from top to bottom and it tends to spread rather evenly. You can also see how stock AMD paste fared quite well by comparison, only a single degree hotter than the pad and two degrees hotter than MX4. Lastly, the Cryonaut solution, which Thermal Grizzly claims is an excellent paste for overclockers and enthusiasts in general, performs only slightly better than MX4 at 85 degrees. And while I expected a slightly wider margin, it should be noted that this first off doesn't cure, which is good, and it should also be noted that we're using the stock cooler here. And, and while four gigahertz doesn't seem like a super stellar overclock by any means, our CPU in particular was decently stubborn when it came to voltage. So I imagine as things get hotter and the cooler's TDP is exceeded, I mean, this is a 95 watt cooler with a 95 watt chip, so it's on the brink already. A new weak link is exposed and the temperature gaps tend to close, which is what we saw here. But back to Carbonaut, am I impressed? Yeah, absolutely. The idea that, you know, like a thin sheet of what's essentially carbon, I mean, that's what this is, can cool an overclock CPU is still a bit mind blowing to me. I've never worked with any thermal pad like this, apart from the ones that you would use to cool VRMs and, and uh, I don't know, uh, VRAM modules and whatnot. Uh, but I've never used something like this over a, a CPU. And this still just seems so like pseudoscience to me. I, I still don't understand exactly how it works. I mean, I understand in principle, but just thinking about the fact that this is between my CPU cooler and my CPU, 
it just kind of scares me a little bit. Still, even though I've seen the numbers, I've seen how effective this is, it just seems so weird. I've been, I've been applying paste for years. But back to the application, I feel like that's the, the selling point of this right here. The ease of use, you literally have to just lay this on top of the IHS. Like you're tucking in your CP for bedtime, right? Sandwich the cooler and you're good to go. Like it, it's mess free, it's reusable, it's long lasting and comparable in performance to some popular thermal solutions like MX4. I love this stuff so much that I actually intend to use only Carbonaut in the future for at least my in-house testing. As long as it's all consistent and constant, I, I'm fine with that. It makes switching coolers super easy and clean in my case. I can build and rebuild systems and simply reuse this thing right here this floppy little piece of carbon. <laughs> it won't cost much more than typical compounds. It won't break down over time. You can, in theory, use this thing over and over again. I mean, that in and of itself is pretty incredible. It's a worthy investment in my book and another option for those more concerned with peace of mind than extreme performance. If you guys like this video or maybe just like the product, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. I think Roman and the Thermal Grizzly team did a great job with this and uh, we should see it on sale pretty soon. Actually, I think you can buy it in a few places already. I'm sure to link those places down below along with the other stuff we've tested here. You can buy MX4 on Amazon and Newegg, I'm pretty sure, as well as Cryonaut Solution. So uh, keep your eyes out for all of those. And uh, just a quick note too on the variations. I'm sure you'll see other people or you've already seen other people test these other solutions. You're gonna get different temperatures. It's gonna depend on the system being used, on the cooler being used, the overclocks, bio settings. It's all going to change just a little bit. So don't hold my numbers perfectly true all the time. The one thing I did wanna do is make sure that this room was at a constant ambient temperature all the time so that from you know solution to solution, there's not a, a big temperature delta. We want everything as consistent as possible, obviously to narrow down only the variables that we really care about. And in this case, it was just thermal compounds. Thumbs up, again, if you liked the video, thumbs down for the opposite, click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more content like this. And uh, I was gonna say something else, I totally forgot what I was gonna, oh yeah, become a member. If you, be, if you wanna be super fancy, become a member. It's like five bucks a month, you get special emojis and stuff. Anyway, I'll let you go. You guys have been awesome. This is Science Studio, thanks for watching. Thanks for learning with us.